So what is up guys and gals? After a long break, it's time for another how-to DIY video. And today, I'm going to show you how to turn this, which is a plain old sway bar link, into this, which is a adjustable sway bar link. Now, the first question you might uh, want to ask yourself is, why would you even want to do this? Well, uh, I'll give you a concrete example. My car, a 1987 Toyota MR2 is now more than 30 years old, which means that finding sway bar links, you know, in auto parts store, uh, you know, on the cheap for cars like this is really hard. So you, you basically have two options. Option one is buy an, you know, adjustable aftermarket heavy duty sway bar link which is great, but it's also pricey. And for a car like my car that's going to be driven mostly on the street, it's pretty much overkill and a bit of a, you know, waste of money that I would like to, you know, invest into other aspects of my build. The other option is to actually buy them from the dealership. Now, I'm lucky enough that you can buy uh, sway bar wings for the MR2 Mark I from a dealership, but they are obscenely expensive. And I was quoted, wait for it, 450 euros, which is I think 480 dollars for two pairs of sway bar wings. Which, when you take into account that it's just a metal rod and two studs, uh, is honestly ludicrous. So, after seeing my options, I decided to make my own. And now I'm gonna show you how to do that. So, the first step towards making your own adjustable sway bar wings is to figure out the length of the sway bar link you're going to need. Now, you can either look this up online or in your factory service manual, or you can simply raise your car up and then raise your suspension and then measure the distance between your sway bar and your strut or wherever else your sway bar uh, links are going to be, you know, mounted. Now, once you have figured out the length of the sway bar links you're going to need, it's time to go out and buy some sway bar links. Now, when buying sway bar links, you just need to consider two things. The sway bar links you're, you're gonna buy have to be longer than the length you need for your sway bar links. And the studs in the sway bar links need to fit through your sway bar and your strut or wherever else, you know, they end up being, you know, attached. With those two things in mind, you can buy any old sway bar link. It can be for any car, for a truck, for whatever you want. You know, you can buy the cheapest ones that you can find. Now, once you have purchased them, it's time to cut them down to size. This is, of course, super easy. Just get an angle grinder, you know, measure twice, you know, cut once. Once you have cut them down, it's time to thread the rods of your links. To do that, we're of course going to use some threading dies. Now, depending on the thickness of your sway bar wings, you're probably going to end up by using an M8, M10, or maybe an M12 uh, threading die. Now, in my case, I was a bit unlucky here, and my sway bar wing was too thin for the M12 threading die and too thick for the M10 threading die. So what I did is I got my angle grinder again and I reduced the thickness of my uh, rods a bit. Now, of course, when doing this, be safe, you know, and do it slowly and methodically so that you end up with a nice and even round shape that is going to be suitable to be, you know, threaded. Once you have reduced the thickness of your links, it's time to thread the rods. Now, this is the most difficult part of this little DIY job because you have to be really accurate. Now, human hands aren't perfectly accurate, so take your time and make sure that the rod goes straight into the threading die so that the rest of your thread ends up being nice and even and straight. Now, you can use, uh, you know, the, the threading die holder that comes with the threading kit usually, but honestly, I do not recommend that because it's really hard to be accurate with that thing, you know, uh, e e even more so if it's a cheap kit. So what I did is I put my threading die in a table vise, I clamped it down, and then I had a lot more control, you know, when making the thread, you know, nice and accurate and even. 
Now, uh, the first part of the thread you are going to be doing by hand, but the rest of it you are going to need some, uh, some more leverage, some more power, and also you do not want to hold the, the link by the stud when you're making the thread because you can end up damaging it like, like that. So what I did is I got some giant uh, pliers and I grabbed the head, the back of the stud, and I twisted it, twisted it slowly until I made all the thread, you know, that I needed. Uh, from time to time, don't forget to back, back out a bit, go back in the threading process because that helps, you know, uh, loosen the shavings from the threads and makes your threads, you know, better and nicer. Once the thread is complete, it's time to, you know, do the same process for the other half of your sway bar link. Once both halves of your sway bar link have been threaded, it's time to put our sway bar link together. And we're going to do that by getting two uh, nylock style uh, nuts and one extended nut. We're going to put one uh, nut on each half of the sway bar link, sway bar link first and then we're, we're going to connect the two with the extended nut. Once that is done, we're going to need to use two wrenches, you know, to tighten it fully so it's nice and rock solid. Now the beauty of a simple setup like this is that it really doesn't matter where you need the studs of your link, you know, to be pointed. Whether they need to be pointed in the, at the, in the same direction or in opposite directions or whatever else, you know, this simple little setup enables you, you know, to have them any way you need. And of course, by extending, you know, and sh or shortening the sway bar link, you can play with your sway bar preload, you know, and change a bit the characteristics, you know, the handling characteristics of your car. So once that is done, once the sway bar links have been assembled, I decided to paint them. Now you do not have to paint them, but I decided to paint them because Let's face it, they aren't really pretty and painting them makes them a bit more inconspicuous and hides, you know, the DIY-ishness of these uh, sort of sway bar links. So once the paint has been dried, the last thing that's left to do is, of course, to install them. When installing the sway bar links, make sure that the nuts used on the studs are also nylock style safety nuts because you know, uh, from the factory, many cars, including the MR2 Mark I, come with a bunch of little shims. Now, over the years, those shims usually get lost. So the only way to ensure, you know, that the nut will not come off without those shims is to use a nylock style safety nut. And there you have it, a super easy and super cheap way of making some DIY adjustable sway bar links. Now, these are a great way, you know, for you to have sway bar links on cars where finding sway bar links is becoming excessively hard. Now also I know that somebody's gonna come out and say oh my god this is so horrible, this is so cheap, this is ghetto, you're gonna die, it's unsafe and the universe is going to explode because you made this. Now let me tell you a few things. Number one, if you're gonna do a lot of drifting and racing and other extreme stuff and autocross and so on. If you're gonna do that with your car all the time, I do not think this is a permanent solution. If you're gonna do heavy duty stuff, then invest into heavy duty equipment and buy some heavy duty aftermarket adjustable sway bar links. Although, that being said, I have seen a lot of amateur drift cars with these things on them and they're sitting there for ages without any sort of issue. But again, from my point of view, from my perspective, that is still a you know temporary solution for a car that does heavy duty things. If, but if you're gonna be driving your car on the street, you know, 85, 90% of the time, this is perfectly adequate. The kind of forces a sway bar link is exposed to will never ever be enough to cause any sort of damage or safety issues or bending or whatever to a setup like this. As long as it's made nicely and properly, you know, it's going to be absolutely safe and absolutely okay. So there you have it, a simple little DIY video that I hope will be useful for someone out there. As always, if you have any sort of questions, feel free to ask 
uh, in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and all of these other things that help YouTube channels. So, that's it for today. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll be seeing you really soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.